Now we got some light. <laughs> Woo! That's bright. I'm texting. Leave me alone. Okay, so we are going Christmas light hunting tonight with Megan and my mommy. Yay! Um, I don't know if they gave us napkins. They didn't give us napkins. Here's a receipt. <laughs> I think there's some in the glove box, Mom. So we've got gas now, and we've got our super fancy Christmas Eve dinner. Thank you. Jack in the box. Yay. Um, we're super posh like that. And so here we go for Christmas lights. Woohoo! Are we excited? They're Woo Facebooking. I'm texting. I'm Facebook. So so excited about Christmas lights. Yeah, no wonder I'm a Grinch this year. I'm as light as a feather. I'm as happy as an angel. I'm as merry as a schoolboy. I'm as giddy as a drunken man. A merry Christmas to everybody. A happy new year to all the world. Hello there. Hoop, hello. He had frisked into the living room and he was now standing there. Perfectly winded. There's the saucepan that the guru was in, cried Scrooge, starting off again and going round the fireplace. There's the door by which the ghost of Jigamali entered. There's the corner where the ghost of Christmas presents sat. There's the window where I saw the wandering spirits. It's all right. It's all true. It all happened. <laughs> really, for a man who had been out of practice for so many years, it was a splendid laugh. A most illustrious laugh. The father of a long, long line of brilliant laughs. I don't know what day of the month it is, said Scrooge. I don't know how long I've been among the spirits. I don't know anything. I'm quite a baby. Never mind. I don't care. I'd rather be a baby. Hello, whip, hello there! He was checked in his transports by the churches, ringing out the lustiest peals he had ever heard. Clash, clang, hammer, ding, dong, bell, dong, ding, hammer, clang, crash. Oh, glorious, glorious. Running to the window, he opened it and put out his head. No fog. No mist, clear, bright, jovial, stirring, cold, cold piping for the blood to dance to. Golden sunlight, heavenly sky, sweet, fresh air, merry bells, oh, glorious, glorious. What's today? cried Scrooge, calling downward to a boy in Sunday clothes who perhaps had loitered in to look about him. Aye, returned the boy with all his might of wonder. What's today, my fine fellow? said Scrooge. Today, replied the boy. Why, Christmas Day! It's Christmas Day, said Scrooge to himself. I haven't missed it. The spirits have done it all in one night. They can do anything they like. Of course they can. Of course they can. Hello, my fine fellow! Hello, returned the boy. Do you know the poulterers in the next street but one at the corner? Scrooge inquired. Well, I should hope I did, replied the lad. An intelligent boy, said Scrooge, a remarkable boy. Do you know whether they've sold the prize turkey that was hanging up there? Not the little prize turkey, the big one. What, the one as big as me, returned the boy. What a delightful boy, said Scrooge. It's a pleasure to talk to him. Yes, my buck. It's hanging there now, replied the boy. Is it, said Scrooge. Go and buy it. Walker, exclaimed the boy. No, no, said Scrooge. I am in earnest. Go buy it and tell him to bring it here that I may give him the direction where to take it. Come back with the man and I'll give you a shilling. Come back with him in less than five minutes and I'll give you half a crown. The boy was off like a shot. He must have had a steady hand at a trigger who had got a shot off half so fast. We are here at, um, like, the most decorated place in Boise. Hope you can kind of see my face. I know there's lights behind me. Um, but it's pretty awesome. We're gonna attempt to cross the street. But he was early at the office next morning. Oh, he was early there. If he could only be there first and catch Bob Cratchit coming late, that was the thing he had set his heart upon. And he did it. Yes, he did it. The clock struck nine. No, Bob. A quarter past. No, Bob. He was full eighteen minutes and a half behind his time. Scrooge sat with his door wide open that he might see him come into the tank. His hat was off before he opened the door, his comforter too. He was on his stool in a jiffy, driving away with his pen as if he were trying to overtake nine o'clock. Hello, growled Scrooge in his accustomed voice as near as he could feign it. What do you mean by coming in here at this time of day? I'm very sorry, sir, said Bob. I am behind my time. You are, repeated Scrooge. Yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you please. It's only once a year, sir, pleaded Bob, appearing from the tank. It shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday, sir. Now, 
I'll tell you what, my friend, said Scrooge. I am not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, he continued, leaping from his stool and giving Bob such a dig in the waistcoat that he staggered back into the tank again. And therefore, I'm about to raise your salary. <laughs> Bob trembled, and he got a little nearer to the ruler. He had a momentary idea of knocking Scrooge down with it, holding him, and calling to the people in the court for help in a straight waistcoat. A merry Christmas, Bob, said Scrooge, with an earnestness that could not be mistaken, as he clapped him on the back. A merry Christmas, Bob, my good fellow, that I have given you for many a year. I'll raise your salary, and endeavour to assist your struggling family, and we'll discuss your affairs this very afternoon. Over a Christmas bowl of smoking bishop, Bob, make up the fires, and buy another coal scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all, and infinitely more. And to Tiny Tim, who did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew, or any other good old city, town, or borough in the good old world. Some people laughed to see the alteration in him, but he let them laugh, and little heeded them. For he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened to this globe for good, at which some people did not have their fill of laughter at the outset and knowing that such as these would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes in grins as have the malady in less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. He had no further intercourse with spirits, but lived on the total abstinence principle ever afterwards, and it was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that truly be said of us, and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. Here's Boise. It looks like this pretty much all the time, so you know, it's like Christmas all the time. I don't know. I know I come from a small city, but it seems awfully big to me.